With no definitive test, some considered IBS a psychological problem, but now Dr. Mark Pimentel of Cedars-Sinai Medical Center has developed two simple blood tests. We now have a test to say you have a disease. The tests, which measure antibodies in the blood, came about from research suggesting that IBS may develop after infection from a bacterial toxin found in food poisoning. The toxin triggers the immune system to attack the intestinal tract long after the toxin is gone. It is the most common gastrointestinal disorder in the United States. Long-term symptoms can disrupt and limit people's lives. The disorder is more prevalent in women than men. Roughly two of every three irritable bowel syndrome sufferers being female. Now for the first time, a simple blood test is making it possible to diagnose IBS, potentially saving patients years of frustration and pain. Our guest is board certified in gastroenterology and internal medicine by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and the American Board of Internal Medicine. He serves on the editorial board for the Journal of Medical Hypotheses, Ideas and Case Reports in Clinical Medicine. Please welcome Dr. Ali Razai to Midpoint. Doctor, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a lot for having me. Ed. Doctor, why has a cure or any sort of a test like this been so elusive for so long? Yeah, so one big problem, as you mentioned, is that this disease is so prevalent, but the symptoms are very non-specific. So we have had problems uh, with uh, determining the exact cause of this disease, and also uh, ruling out other causes have been a major issue, challenging for all patients and also healthcare professionals. Usually these patients undergo numerous uh, studies, such as endoscopies, colonoscopies, imaging, blood tests, stool tests, that may take several years and a lot of expenses until when they're all negative, then you t determine that uh, this is irritable bowel syndrome. I was astounded but, to read some of the numbers in here and find out that some people can have this for 10, 15, 20 years, and there's been no way to really pinpoint it to this, to this time. So this has indeed been, been so elusive. What has been the most significant hurdle that you've had to overcome then developing the test to find this out? So the biggest problem uh, was that the underlying pathophysiology of the disease was hardly understood. Now we know that food poisoning uh, is one major factor as the cause of all these symptoms. When you pick up an infection, the bacteria goes through your system, but your body develops antibodies against the toxins of those bacteria, and, uh, and those antibodies can go and affect the motility and the movement of your gut in, in a way that you end up with significant symptoms that irritable bowel syndrome uh, produces, such as bloating, abdominal pain, change in bowel habits such as constipation, diarrhea, that can go for years, sometimes decades. Well, so you're basically looking at something here that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that can start with food poisoning one day or over a, a short course of time, and you wouldn't know it's really affecting you with IBS for 10 years or more? Right, exactly. So when you pick up that uh, infection or food poisoning initially, that infection or the first bout of symptoms can dissipate quickly, maybe one day or maximum usually one week. But after that, several months after that, you start feeling symptoms that are compatible with more irrit uh, irritable bowel syndrome-like symptoms, such as bloating, constant uh, feeling of fullness after eating, diarrhea, constipation. Uh, sometimes it's associated with fatigue and cripples you and affects your personal and professional uh, life significantly. So the important part about this is that now, instead of getting all those investigations, you have a simple uh, blood test that we can check that you have uh, that uh, uh, you have irritable bowel syndrome or not, and you can uh, go and get the appropriate treatment accordingly uh, without having all those expenses uh, inflicted on you. Why is it then that, according to the study, IBS affects women more than men? That's another question that uh, needs to be answered in future studies, uh, but that's a phenomenon that has been repeatedly uh, re um, reproduced in different countries uh, that is more common in uh, females than males. 
Just like so any then, other disease, irritable bowel syndrome, it's a multifactorial disease. One part of it is food poisoning, but the response that you eventually will have with food poisoning is probably depends on the genetic pool of each patient as well. So doctor, I have about a minute left here. How quick before something like this becomes a universally available test and everybody gets it in, in every doctor's office? So the test is right now available. Uh, it's called IBS Check. Uh, you can order it and uh, it's a simple blood test and the result can be available within a day or two. The, uh, and you can go on our website, ibscheck.com, uh, I, I spelled as I-B-S-C-H-E-K. Our most recent uh, publication in PLOS 1, uh, which is a peer-reviewed journal with uh, more than 2,500 patients, and also uh, that some information about uh, irritable bowel syndrome and how you can order this test is all available on that website. Good news for you. You're going to have a lot of happy people out there to find something like this so they can get it taken care of and not have to wait so long. Dr. Ali Razai, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate the time, and we'll make sure to pass the word on. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me again. All right. Easy test, easy way to get it done. Hey, come on, that's exactly what you need, right? Make life a little bit easier. Stay with us, because we will continue on the only show that questions everything. This is Midpoint.